Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions from YouTube users getting folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. We have a question from YouTube user Kamisha9002 who asked us, Hi Vincent, I've been told that since I have allowed my employer to build a case with a number of bogus statements and allegations against me, that my case would be much harder to prove. I ask what could I do or how can I prove that despite all the false allegations and statements used against me, that the true reason I was terminated was in fact due to protected activity, filing safety and health complaints within the company as well as outside organizations. Okay, so let's start from the back and we'll work our way forwards. First off, you're gonna to have to specify what you mean by protected activity. It sounds like you're saying you engage in protected activity which in the field of employment law is generally going to be complaining of workplace discrimination, workplace sexual harassment, or unpaid wages. But then you put a slash in there and you said filing safety and health complaints, which um, most employment attorneys in most of the country are going to say, okay, don't care about that. Why? Well, OSHA claims, OSHA is the agency, the federal agency that manages workplace safety, are... Um, generally not super valuable. They can be, right? Somebody's always going to be like, but I heard somebody got $30 million. Yeah, okay, sure. It had, oh, I got a friend. I got a kitty. Uh, listen, yeah, there's people who made $30 million. From OSHA, maybe. Uh, there's always going to be an exception. But generally speaking, OSHA claims, if they go anywhere at all, are not going to be very valuable. So when you're like, I engage in protected activity and I file workplace safety and health complaints, most of the employment attorneys in most of the country say, uh, which is it? Because one of those things I care about and one of those things I don't. Because they want to make you money, right? The way they make money is by helping you. And in order to help you, they need to make you money. And, and a workplace health complaint is not necessarily going to be worth all that much, right? Now, that's not true in the entirety of the nation. There are some states with great whistleblower laws. There are some states with great health and safety laws. And those jurisdictions, those attorneys might be much more excited about a case in which you were fired for bringing forward health and safety issues. So check with local counsel as always. But here, what I think you're saying is that you did two separate things. You engaged in protected activity, which is probably complaining about workplace discrimination, workplace sexual harassment, or unpaid wages, and you separately filed some health and safety issues. Cool. Talk to local counsel about the health and safety issues. Those might be viable. Those might be valuable. I don't know. I don't know where you are, what the laws of where you are could be. And I also don't know, I guess I should say, I also wouldn't be allowed to tell you what the laws of your jurisdiction are because I'm not allowed to comment on state laws outside of the state of New York. Federal laws depend through the EEOC, however, I can't. So we'll keep going further into the question. Let's assume you engage in protected activity in the realm of employment law, which would be, again, basically a complaint of discrimination, a complaint of sexual harassment, or a complaint of un unpaid wages. The best thing you can do to establish they were papering your file, right? What you're saying, I think, essentially here is that you went to some attorney and the attorney said they really wrote a lot of nasty things about you. They really documented well, and that's going to make your case harder, right? That's what employers do. Employers, when you're working there, will document every misstep they can in order to make it look like you're a very bad employee, right? This is the reason for written discipline. This is the reason for step discipline. People always think step discipline is to protect them. No. No, it's not. This is the reason why people get put on performance improvement plans, right? You have you have 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to turn it around so the employer can look like, we tried everything and we documented everything. We tried so hard. We had counseling. We did everything we could. It's not our fault this person had to be fired. They just wouldn't, wouldn't do the job, right? That's what they're trying to go for. That's why they're trying to document. So it sounds like you went to an attorney and the attorney might have said, well, they documented the labor living hell out of you, and this case is going to be difficult now. That may be true. That may be not. I don't know really anything about your situation. I don't really think about your case. But what I'll say to you is, if you engage in protected activity, the day you engage in it is going to be very, very key evidence here. Because if, like, let's say you engage in protected activity May 1st, and then your employer started to paper your file, get all these allegations against you, get all these statements against you, all in your file on May 10th. Well, well, we have ourselves a bit of retaliation claim and the burden of evidence is 
in your favor on a retaliation claim, right? There's a burden shifting on retaliation where the employer is going to have to prove their innocence uh, under the federal laws after you engage in protected activity. And so um, what you can say is, listen, I engage in protected activity. I complained of workplace discrimination, hypothetically, whatever it is. And then all of a sudden they started to paper my file. That is a good, strong narrative for you. And if that is your narrative and an attorney doesn't see that, it's time to talk to different attorneys, right? Uh, schedule always three to five consultations with attorneys in your local area. Now, if that's not what happened, well, things are going to get much, much more complex for you, right? Like, let's say they were documenting your file way back on January 1st. They were they were putting in things that saying you're not doing your job, you're not hitting your numbers, you're showing up late. So-and-so says you spend too long playing on your phone in the bathroom. Like, they're papering your file extensively, and they've been papering it since January. A couple of things per month, and now it's May. And now, in May, you hypothetically engage in protected activity again, right? Again, that's our complaint of workplace discrimination, workplace sexual harassment, something of the nature. And that's a difficult narrative. That's a very difficult narrative. So some of the things you're going to have to do is go line by line through their allegations, through what they've written down about you, and say, hey, uh, these three things didn't happen, and here's how I can prove they didn't happen. And prove it. Get your key swipe data. Like, they're like, oh, uh, Kamisha was late January 2nd. Not according to your time cards, dick, right? Like, you're going to have to go through and do this kind of stuff. Um, Kamisha doesn't get along well with her coworkers. I got statements from my coworkers that say I'm a peach. I'm the best person to work with in all the land, right? Yeah, you're going to have to contradict them. You're going to have to go line by line. And there are going to be attorneys who don't want to do the work because that kind of thing is going to introduce extra risk and extra work, and they're not going to love it. And you're going to have to go for, find an attorney who will do the work, who believes in you, who believes in the case. It could be more challenging. It could. Just a reality, right? But that being said, if it was easy, everybody would sue their employer, right? And also, there's going to be hungry employment attorneys out there. There's not enough of us, but there's still hungry ones out there, right? And sometimes um, those hungry ones will take cases because... They don't have enough cases for whatever reason. Uh, maybe too many people hired us, and then there weren't enough people around to hire Larry, Larry the EEOC guy, or whatever it is, right? I don't know. Um, and so Larry's starving. Larry's got five cases to his name, and he knows he needs more cases. And he looks at your case, and he says, okay, it looks like you did engage in legitimate protected activity before you were fired. That's good. That's valuable. It looks like you experienced workplace discrimination, workplace sexual harassment. That's good. That's valuable. Um, I don't know about this health complaint stuff, but I'll, I'll look it up in the local laws because I'm Larry the EEOC guy. And um, I think I can help. I think this makes sense for me to put my time and my effort into this case because I'm Larry and I need more cases and I can help. You might want a Larry, right? If you've got a difficult narrative with a lot of allegations in your in your file and a lot of you know documentation that doesn't go your way, you might need a hungrier employment attorney who wants to put in the time and fight the fight because he or she is starving, not making the money they want to make, right? And is that necessarily indicative that they're not good? No, I don't think so. I mean, listen, there's a lot of people who start firms in this field and they're brand new and they don't have any like social credit. Like how are they going to prove they're good, right? When I started my firm, people would be like, you look like a man-child. They weren't wrong. I look like a man-child at that time in my life. I look like a little baby, uh, chubby cheeks. Uh, it was weird, though. It was like a, a baby with chubby cheeks and a shaved head. It was, it was, it was, it was an interesting look, right? I, I made some decisions, most of which were pretty questionable in terms of appearance, right? So people come in, they'd sit down with me, and they'd be like, listen, I've talked to five other attorneys, I'm only talking to you because they didn't take my case. I'm like, flattering. Flattering. Thank you. You look like a kid. I think you've only been in this industry two years. Um, but, I, you know, I'll take a chance on you. Take a chance on me, right? I mean, not to quote the bard, but take a chance on me. So, yeah, tone deaf. Correct. Yes. Um, 
that might be the kind of attorney you need, Kamisha. I don't know the specifics of your situation, but if it's something where they papered your file before you engaged in protected activity, um, my advice would be to find a hungrier, more tenacious, more ferocious, more detail-oriented employment attorney and uh, get them to do the hard work for you. I hope this helps. If it does, like, subscribe, comment down below. If it doesn't, let me know how I failed you. I will make a follow-up video. And remember, almost everybody works. Everybody wins. Be smart out there.